Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to take a look at Twister OS. What is Twister OS? Well, essentially it gives your Raspberry Pi Windows 10 or Raspbian X Nighthawk look to it. You can also play movies such as Netflix or Hulu, a whole bunch of others. You can also use Android mirroring to connect up to your cell phone if it's an Android phone. RetroPie is also pre-installed to allow you to play those console and arcade games. And if you're a Mac user, you may prefer iRaspian, which has a similar user interface as the Mac OS. And if you wish to switch back, all you have to do is double-click the icon, run the script, and it'll reboot your Pi, and you'll be back on Nighthawk. Locate a blank microSD card, and let's go ahead, and I'll show you how to set it up right now. In this video, I will be using the 8GB Raspberry Pi 4 kit by Canikit. I recently reviewed this kit. I'll put a link up above if you're interested. Okay, first let's go to Raspbian. Notice there's a B in there, dash x.com, and we'll go to the page that has Twister OS. Huge thank you to Grey Duck and Salvador of the Pi Labs team who came up with this awesome build for the Raspberry Pi 4. There are links below to the Pi Labs YouTube channel as well as additional information. Let's go ahead and download Twister OS. Click the download link. And once it's downloaded, you want to go to the directory where you downloaded it, right click, and use 7-zip. So I'm going to extract here and unzip the file. And in my case, the file itself did not have a .img extension, so I did have to go in and rename it and put a .img at the end. Yours may not be that way. Anyway, from there, you can use Win32 Disk Imager or Belina Etcher. I'm going to go ahead and use Win32 Disk Imager and select the file. Make sure I have the correct microSD selected and click right. Then click yes and the image will be burned to your micro SD card. Once it's burned, click OK and exit. Now pop it in your Raspberry Pi 4 and power it on. The default password is Raspberry, which I highly recommend you change, and it's also in the README that we're about to discuss. So the first thing you want to do is double-click the README file and read it. <laughs> it's got a lot of good information in here, so be sure and check it out. Um, Again, it talks about changing the password and much more. All right, so in the right-hand corner, you have a volume control as well as an audio mixer. We'll click the audio mixer and bring that up. You also have easy access to your Wi-Fi connection. You can disconnect, like I'm doing here, and easily reconnect, and the interface looks very familiar, <laughs> and it works very easily. Now I'm reconnected. Also, you can go into the power management settings and make any adjustments there that you wish. There's general, system, display, screen lock timeout, and more. All right, over in the lower right here, we are going to set up a new Bluetooth device. So I'm going to set my device in pairing mode and take a look here. Now it's shown up. I'll select the device and click Next. We will be using this wireless controller later on, so we're going ahead and pairing it right now. Now it's all paired. Hit Next, and it has been added. So easy. Also down here you have the mouse pad, which is like Notepad. And we'll go through all these applications. There's a command window, or actually a terminal window, so you can issue commands directly on your Raspberry Pi. You also have a spreadsheet application here, a word processor, mail, and a browser. Let's go ahead and open the browser. And I'm going to go to wagnerstechtalk.com. Kind of fast forward this a little bit for you. And yeah, works great. 
All right, next you have Add and Remove Software. So you can go in here and add additional applications that you might be interested in. And if you click down here, we're going to go more into this later. Catfish is a cool little utility where you can search for files and folders and stuff. Now we're going to hit the button in the lower left, and you can see under Accessories what applications are installed. There are quite a few of them. There's the Bookshelf, Commander Pi, which we'll get into in just a little bit, Menu Editor, Notes, all kinds of stuff here. We'll go ahead and go through each of these groups just to give you a good idea of what all is pre-installed. You have graphics applications, internet applications, Chromium Media Edition, the Libre Office Suite, which is awesome, uh, settings, additional settings in here that you can make adjustments to various configurations and so forth. We'll get into some of this in a little bit, not all of it, because clearly there's way too much to cover in one single video. All right, there's System. You can see all the stuff under System. Cool. Let's go back to Internet and go to Chromium Media Edition, and I'd like to show you real quick Netflix running. So we'll go to www.netflix.com and we'll just kind of browse through the list here let you take a look. All right, cool. Let's uh, go to documentaries and I'll just play one brief segment here. We'll just skip around. They dimmed the lights first in the command center when they set a condition zebra alert. Most of the times when they set these drills, they would say, this is a drill, this is a drill. Okay, so cool. Netflix works great. Let's try the My Android. This application will allow you to connect your phone, your Android phone, directly to your Raspberry Pi, and basically you can control whatever's on the phone using your Raspberry Pi. Now, you can't hear any audio through here. That's uh, one minor limitation to this particular app, but hey, it's pretty cool that you can actually control your phone through your Pi. Now we'll go into the file manager here, and if you're a Windows 10 user, this will look very familiar. Looks very much like the Windows 10 interface. It's pretty cool. I think they did an outstanding job with this. All right, so. Another thing I want to show you here with Catfish is, let's say you want to load up your ROMs for RetroPie. Well, just type ROMs, and it'll take you to the subdirectory where your ROMs exist. Now, of course, you could search for files and what have you. But let's go into RetroPie, and the UI does run a little sluggish in here. We're going to go ahead and configure the gamepad. Yeah, so I'll just go ahead and hit all the buttons here. And now you have RetroPie. And I'm going to select Game Boy Color, go into Frogger, and we'll play a quick game of Frogger. And this is emulating the Game Boy. Alright, so now we'll go ahead and exit RetroPie. You'll also notice Steam is on here. You can play some 2D games. Uh, Commander Pi is one that I really want to show you here. Uh, I've already changed the clock speed of my processor, but I'm going to go ahead and show it to you anyway. We'll go to Processor Details. So we just move that off to the side. Go to Bootloader. You can see the details there. There's Network and Overclocking. So if you click here and click OK, you can type in the frequency of the CPU. And at the bottom here, you'll see the stable proposed values. I'm going to go ahead and set it for 2000. And then once you do that, move up to Set Arm Frequency. And now we'll set the GPU to 600 and click the set GPU frequency button. Now we'll set the over voltage to 6 and then apply and reboot. That was super easy. Now let me show you how to switch to the iRaspian. Double click this icon here and press enter to switch to iRaspian theme and enter one more time to reboot. Once rebooted, You'll now see the login, type in Raspberry again. 
and you will be logged in to iRespian. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right, so let's take a look around. Uh, here's the settings manager where you have basically the same icons and everything that you saw in the Nighthawk interface, but with a macOS look and feel. It's pretty cool. All right, we'll cancel out of there. And we'll go up to Display right here. And I'll show you where you can go to change the resolution of your display. So you just make your change, apply it, and close. Uh, let's go in here. you got a calculator. Here you have your shell or terminal window. Here we have GIMP for our photo editor. <laughs> I like the GIMP shop logo. That's pretty neat. Very cool. Here is VLC for playing back videos and audio. An image viewer. There's the mouse pad, which is like notepad. There's maps, calendar. Let's take a look at that real quick. Yep, it's a calendar. Now we'll go into the app launcher and take a look and wow, that's very nice. I like how this interface flows. Very cool. From what I understand, certain shell commands can't run from there, but all applications can. All right, so let's go into the file manager. We'll take a look at that. Very cool. All right, we'll close out of there. Let's go ahead and get into LibreOffice Writer, the word processor, and we'll go ahead and create a document. Before I do that, let me go ahead and minimize this, and let me launch a browser window, and I'll go to wagnerstechtalk.com again, and I'm just going to grab an image here. So I'm going to take this header image and right-click it, go to Copy Image, and we'll go back to LibreOffice Writer and paste it into our document and then we'll type in something. I'll kind of speed this up for you. And, huh. All right, let's resize that. Make it bold and check this out. You go to File Print or hit the Print icon and hit OK. And let's check it out. Let's see what the actual results look like. Very cool. Very easy. And yes, I did it right from the Raspberry Pi 4. All right, let's switch back to Nighthawk. So we're going to double click the icon, press enter, and enter again. And now we'll reboot back into Nighthawk. Let's quickly review some of the features of Twister OS. It has Raspbian X, which is the Windows 10 look. It has iRaspbian, which is the OS X or Mac OS look. Commander Pi allows you to easily overclock. Android mirroring. Box86, which I did discuss here. Check out Pi Lab's YouTube channel. Chromium Media Edition. Retro Pi. And so much more. Definitely go check out the Pi Lab's YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you want to see more from Wagner's Tech Talk, please click the subscribe. And with that, I shall talk to you very soon.